With the winning of suffrage, women gained access to full citizenship and formal political power. But access was not implementation. The struggle for citizenship and power would continue to the end of the 20th century and beyond. And yet women's suffrage demonstrated that the arc of women's lives had shifted from the justification of dependency to a search for independence. It's no accident that the moment in which it shifted is often identified with modernity. Urbanization and the machine age carved the path to modernity. Large cities and huge industrial plants promoted an anime that gave individuals their heads. New managerial and impersonal bureaucratic structures created a cloak of invisibility over the networks of kin and friendship that had previously fostered prosperity and entered the workplace. Complicated financial and banking systems obscured the social responsibilities formally vested in community. Modernity separated individuals from their families and introduced new possibilities for independence and autonomy for women no less than for men. For women, modernity was a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it weakened the bonds of custom and culture of family and community that had protected women, fostering government intervention in private lives and encouraging the substitution of law for custom. For example, whereas previously men's responsibilities as breadwinners had been taken for granted, they now began to be formalized. Desertion, previously condemned but rarely punished, slowly became an offense to be compensated with support payments for families. Protective labor legislation provides another example. It imposed limits on women's choices at the very moment when women sought increasing independence. On the other hand, modernity provided women with new possibilities outside the framework of family. It opened the door to new jobs in impersonal offices and new adventures, such as journalism, for example, that released women from some of the old norms. Women who aimed at economic independence might expect to achieve it under the conditions of modernity. Those who sought sexual freedom found spokespersons in radicals like Emma Goldman or birth control advocates like Margaret Sanger. Domesticity did not by any means disappear, but it slowly loosed its hold even on the daughters of the middle classes, making it possible to imagine women functioning as individuals, especially in the political sphere. As women took hold of their new freedom, they searched for avenues of political expression. The women's peace movement, for example, constituted one such path. Engagement in radical causes, another. Backdoor involvement in political parties was a third. And then a search for positions in the bureaucracy, access to voice through lobbying and volunteer associations would allow some women to implement their new power. But a successful political agenda required a unity of purpose and modernity did little to heal the divisions among women. Fragmented by identity, religion, marriage, class, and race, women remained disunited. Even as the power of individual women increased, their capacity to unify declined. Gender, we might say, lacked a clear and a stable political content. On the face of it, it looked as if by World War I and in the period shortly afterwards, some women were ready to launch into the modern period. 
they were ready to participate as autonomous individuals in communities and workplaces that prided themselves not on personal relationships, but on achieving efficiency and productivity. They benefited from anomie to free themselves from sexual restraints, that they did not free themselves, that they could not yet bring themselves to take advantage of their newly won political power remains a mystery to many. But historians of women see in the failure of many women to take advantage of modernity the shadow of a domesticity that had not yet disappeared.